So I'm lying in bed last night, and obviously the first thing you think about when you're trying to fall asleep are big, beefy dwarves. And I was thinking about a deck idea that I wanted to put into play and see if it was at least a little bit viable or interesting. And uh, it worked out. And it all revolves around uh, one card named Xavier Moran. Now, Xavier Moron, or, you know, Xavier, whatever, you can call it whatever you want. It somewhat works. It's not tier one, not going to get you a pro rank. It's not what I do. I make interesting, cool decks that have, uh, you know, neat little synergies, something that you can try. Uh, we played it. It involves Dana as your uh, leader, and it's a lot of fun. And I present to you Professor Extra. All right, so what is Professor Extra? Well, Professor Extra is the name of the deck that uses Dana as your leader and basically revolves around getting a uh, Xavier Moran on the board late game and protected by immunity and given a little bit of vitality. And you could probably assume the rest. Now, the cool part about this deck is that, um, you know, it, it really revolves around a couple cards early, uh, sorry, late, but towards the uh, beginning of the game, you can really use a lot of your bigger cards. Things like, say, Synthesis and uh, Moren and Sursa and all these guys. You know, um, really, at the end of the game, you want to be focusing on a one three card combo, of which you really only need two of the three cards in hand to pop off. So I'll walk you through this. We'll go with the deck list first, and then I'll give you a little bit of the base strategy. You know the drill. So here we go. All right. Now, standard procedure. We've got two Dwarven Agitators, which are going to be most likely connecting with your... Uh, with your Sheldon Skaggs. Now, you do not necessarily want to connect with Xavier, but you could if all else fails. And we've got two Vriad Dragoons. Vriad Dragoons are good to just bump things off the melee row that are a pain in the ass or move those trebuchets from the range row and stop those from being pains in the ass. At the same time, it could also put your uh, Xavier Morin back onto the melee row if necessary. There's a lot of use for the Vriad Dragoon. It's a great four provision card. Dryad's Caress. Here's a nature card times two I play because this is what gives your uh, your unit vitality and purifies if it's being a pain in the ass. Now Dryad's Caress is great because you have six turns of vitality. So that's technically six points, but on Xavier Moran, six points becomes a lot more and we'll touch upon that a little bit later. I have two of those. I've got two Dryad Matrons. Uh, simply for dealing two damage and thinning out the deck a little bit. So it's a great uh, little... Sorry, um, that's not what I'm talking about. Those are the uh, Sentinels. These are the Dryad Matrons are going to be shifting over to a side. And early on, you can kind of get an engine piece going with buffing. Now, uh, dedicate these cards uh, early if you can. Get an engine piece going so you can sort of be competitive round one. It's no big deal because when you match those up with Doblasana Sentries, you're tending to get a crap ton of points early if both of these uh rather if all of these are going on at once if you have all four going your engine on those four uh, bronze cards is really really humongous and near unmatchable uh but two broken on sentinels as well uh a two damage thinning play no big deal there and that does it for the bronze cards we're gonna go cruise through the gold cards i have one uh milva and i like to play this either really early or save it for round three as an immune unit. Depends on what you're playing against. The immunity is going to be big. Uh, Karen uh, for a lock and a movement. Sheldon Skaggs, obviously, to eat those uh, agitator buffs. And the Ithleen buff to get a really good return on investment with him. I've got Sursa. Again, Sursa is going to be not only to connect and uh, beef up your Sheldon Skaggs, but it's also good to protect cards that you need to live, like maybe your Triant Boar or as we'll get to, your um, your Avalok. And I will show you the Avalok right there. I've got Avalok. Now he's one of the key pieces of this deck. This and Dryad's Caress are two of the cards that you need in hand in round three to make the uh, combo go. Before that, I've got uh, Triant Boar, a great um, early game round one card to sort of uh, push tempo and get a lot of points out of and maybe be competitive in round one. Uh, Moren here, either two damage or lock. There's a lot of engines out there. You want to be locking stuff, but at the same time, you just two damage is not the worst thing in the world. I've got Mahakam Horn. This is a round three card that you want to play. Rarely will you play this in round one uh, to sort of steal a round, but uh, this is a great card next to the Xavier Moran as well, which should be immune. This and next to uh, between a immune Xavier and an immune Saskia is a lot of uh, problem for your opponent. 
Now here is the big piece, the whole piece de resistance, the centerpiece of the deck, Xavier Moran. Now his uh, whole deal is when he's on the melee row, every buff he takes, he adds an additional two. Now when you mix this when you, uh, with uh, a vitality, vitality will boost it by one every turn. Suddenly your vitality is three a turn. That is big. Now if you play uh, the Dryad's Caress on this uh, and then give it immunity, you're really banking a load of points. So your four point Xavier Moran is now eating 20, uh, 18 points of vitality. So he's a 22 point unit for nine provision. Uh, nine plus the four provision. So you're getting 22 points out of 13 provision. That is one hell of a return. So that's kind of where we're going with this deck. And I'll continue onward. Malayan, either for removal, shield removal, uh, mass shield removal, or just spot removal. Malayan's a great card. Uh, I've got Barnabas because you're going to be playing Dryads, you're going to be playing Dwarves, and obviously you're going to be playing a lot of Elves. Uh, that's a great card to have. Say Synthesis, eight protected points. You just can't really uh, downplay the importance of immunity, especially in a heavy control meta. And finally, Ithleen. Ithleen is just uh, banking four points into Sheldon's Skaggs if possible, or wherever else uh, she'll hold them. It's gotta be a Scoia'tael unit, but uh, she's there to just uh, dump and you know put that in your, say, Synthesis, put it in your, um, what else? Uh, where was I? Sheldon Skaggs, obviously, because the return on Sheldon Skaggs with any buff is huge. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're going. There's the list for you right there. Now, the basic strategy of this deck, and you'll kind of take a few games to to sort of get it uh, get it going, but round one, you want to be pushing relatively strongly, and uh, there's not much that you want to hang on to because your combo piece in round three is going to consist of having... Um, you're going to have a uh, copy of... Um, my goodness. Um, Avalok, there we go. So... You're going to be playing Avalok, and then all at the same time, you're going to be first playing Dana to get your uh, your Xavier Moran out of the deck. He plays on the front row. Then out of hand, you'll be playing Dryad's Caress to give him six points of vitality, and then you're using the order on Avalok to make him immune. He then will become an immune unit on the front row that can't be moved, locked, or targeted by any, uh, by any spell. So uh, you are gonna be reaping the benefits of having him ticking away for six turns at three points a turn. Beautiful. Not to mention if he's next to a Mahakamhorn, he gets an additional two points bo boost from the Mahakamhorn. That's basically how it goes. Now in the meta, again, you're gonna get you're gonna get really frustrated and annoyed because it's really hard for uh, a card like Avalok to stick because a lot of the times people see Avalok and they know that that's the first step of something disgusting that's going to happen to them, so they usually get rid of it right away. The way to get around that um, is to fish out as many locks and removals as possible, and that's why a lot of these cards that you're playing, things like Triant Boar and such, you want to get those out of the way. The Dryad Matrons are also a big deal for people, so they're going to eat locks and removal real quick. So when you're playing Avalok, uh, you want to play him with like six or seven cards in hand, and your opponent might have an answer for it. But at the same time, if Avalok eats an answer from your opponent, uh, that's one less answer that they might have for Xavier. So that's kind of how it goes. Play early, play aggressive, and in the uh, round three, it's basically uh, Avalok, and then the next turn, you're going to Dana out your Xavier, and then you're going to play Dryad's Caress and then make it immune. And then he sits there and just reaps the benefit and harvests points like a motherfucker. Probably shouldn't have sworn. I think this is the first time I've ever sworn in a deck guide. Nonetheless, this is Professor Extra, and here's the list one more time. Two times Dwarven Agitator, two times Vryhead Dragoon, two times Dryad's Caress, two times Brocolon Sentinel, uh, two times Dryad Matron, two times Dolblathana Sentry. Uh, I have Milva, I have Karen, I have Sheldon Skaggs, I have Sursa, I have Triant Boar, Moran, Avalok, Mahakam Horn, Xavier Moran, Milan, Barnabas, Say Synthesis, and finally Ithleen. These are the cards that I chose. The core cards for the, the combo are uh, Avalok and Dryad's Caress in hand with uh, Xavier in the deck to pull out with Dana. That's how you want to make it happen. That is Professor Extra.
So there you have it, that's Professor Extra, another little uh, idea I had that I want to play, and we played it on stream uh, this morning, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, though there was some frustrating issues with card draw and whatnot, it actually was fun to pull off, and we beat some uh, wonderfully unique and original brand lists with it as well, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but you can probably tailor this deck to your liking. As long as Dana can hit at nine, uh, a nine provision Squiatel card, you're probably uh, aces and good to go. Uh, again, remember Avalok and Dryad's Caress in hand and uh, Xavier in your deck and you're good to go. Everything else is gravy and have fun. And if there's any other suggestions that you have, please drop them in the comments. It's always good to hear. I read every single one that you guys put and I may not reply to all of them, but I promise you I read everything that I get. And uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. It means the world to me. Catch me on Twitch at uh, www.twitch.tv slash watchflake or on Twitter. Love to hear what you have to say at watchflake on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best of days and be kind to one another. Adios.